I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, Hendrik Lever, and for having me, uh, and also for making the whole project possible. And you've all received the book, I hope by now, and have been able to see the, uh, what has taken us five years to accomplish. Um, and uh, I, I'm a little bit nervous because I've spoken to many, many photographers, but I've never spoken to a group of finance people. And uh, I've, I've been assured that, uh, that you all will clap very hard at the end of the talk and give me much applause. So <laughs> thank you very much. I'm just a friendly guy from Texas. <laughs> um, anyway, what I want to show you today is a story um, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it starts, um, it starts in 1988, and the title is One Day with Warren Buffett Can Change Your Life. And that's literally what happened. Um, so this is my story. It's a story of dumb luck. It begins in 1988 when I was commissioned to make a portrait of Warren Buffett. Little did I know that day would completely change my life. I was a freelance photographer working in New York, and I got assigned by Esquire magazine to make five portraits. And I want to show you the portraits one by one. The first portrait was the comedian and director Rob Reiner photographed in Los Angeles. The second portrait was of Philip Roth in New York City. The third portrait was of the advertising legend Hal Reine. The fourth portrait was of the basketball coach Pat Riley. The very last portrait and fifth portrait was the investor Warren Buffett in 1988. Um, the morning I spent with Buffett forever changed the course of my life. Before I left Buffett that day after making the photograph, he gave me a compilation of his letters to shareholders. On the plane ride back, I had a choice to either read the vomit bag again or to pick up the letters to the shareholders. I picked up his letters, never had I read an annual report before, but his down-to-earth, straightforward, and commonsensical writing struck a chord, a light bulb went off, and I've been a student of value investing, Berkshire Hathaway, and Warren Buffett ever since. So it was a complete accident. This is how the photograph appeared in Esquire magazine in the June 1988 issue. I made $500 for making the picture. It took a couple of years, but I saved another $5,000 and bought my first share of Berkshire Hathaway. Later, the photograph was used on the cover of Roger Lowenstein's first edition of the wonderful biography on Buffett, The Making of an American Capitalist. And in 2010, the Smithsonian Institute National Portrait Gallery acquired an original print that's part of their permanent collection. So, a lot of times when I photograph somebody, I'll send them a print. And I, I sent Warren Buffett a print in 1988 after I took his picture. I thought I would never hear back a big, busy CEO. Four or five days later, a letter arrived in the mailbox. And Buffett wrote, and I said, I explained, the photograph doesn't do him justice. He's a lot better looking than I depicted him. But uh, <laughs> he wrote back and he said, dear Michael, the photograph arrived in good shape and more than does me justice, but who only wants justice and respect to his appearance? <laughs> Sincerely, Warren Buffett. So uh, this is not me giving Warren Buffett stock tips. Uh, um, 
it, you know, until meeting Buffett, I had no idea what an annual report was. Um, and after reading his, let, his shareholder letters, I started going to the meetings. And this was in 1994, going to a meeting. And the last year was my 25th annual meeting. I told the magazine editors uh, I worked a lot for the Time Inc. magazines like Money Magazine, Fortune Magazine, Life Magazine. And I told them about my enthusiasm about Buffett. And so I started getting all the assignments to go photograph Warren Buffett. And this was in uh, the early 90s with Warren Buffett with his son Howard and his grandson Howie. So I kept sending Warren Buffett prints and <laughs> he kept writing me letters. Uh, it's sort of unusual, you know, if I send a print to most people I photograph, I never hear back. Every time I've written Warren Buffett a letter, I get a letter back a week later. And uh, I think that made me very, very um, confident about my vested, the character of that man. And I saved all my letters. Okay. But... I also told my wife that Warren Buffett answers letters. And um, I, I, uh, I don't know if all men do this, but somehow I felt compelled to tell my wife everything that I'd learned about Warren Buffett and all the intricacies of investing in finance. Uh, I don't think she ever listened, but she listened that he answered his letters. So uh, in the early in 1993, my wife and I had a terrible disagreement. Terrible disagreement. She wanted to build a pool behind our house, which would cost a lot of money, and I didn't, did not. Uh, I understood return on equity, and there was going to be no return on equity of a pool. So, uh, but it was hot in Texas, and we we're at a standstill, and she's a writer, so unfairly, um, um, she wrote, a poem to Warren Buffett. Uh, in, in the poem, which I'm going to read to you, uh, she pleads for a pool. So here it goes. Uh, it's, it's American, so I hope it translates to, uh, to German. So Buffett mania, Big Burt's, Baby Burke's, Coca-Cola Wee, the Oracle of Omaha's made a rich girl out of me. I put a tin note down in 1953, and by 1999, it's worth $3,043,000,000. Old Warren, oh, sorry, old Warren Buffett has taught me how to save. Long term, not short term, is what gets his raves. Brand names, big moats, his recipe supreme. Ben Graham, he's not, that's not his lot. He has a greater dream. My husband thinks it's crazy for me to sell a share. Ugh. To build a pool and deck for us, he says it's not fair. He says he's worked so hard to stockpile A's and B's. The orchard is only started. Why cut down any trees? But I have been so faithful. I've been to Omaha to hear the sage and Charlie pontificate Berkshire's law. I've watched Lou Dobbs at nighttime in the bitchy Willow Bay. I've foregone all those manicures so I could have my day. And now I put my foot down. I want to swim at home. To skinny dip, no clothes, would be so hip, my husband's such a drone. Well, as I told you, Warren Buffett Wright always answers his, his letters. But this is one time I wish Warren Buffett had not written back. <laughs> Tell your husband that even Berkshire holders spend a few dollars now and then, and I definitely recommend a pool. <laughs> Damn you, Warren. <laughs> After he gives in, write another pen, poem and send it along. In the meantime, keep coming to the meetings. Oh, guess who won? <laughs> so I did some financial analysis. 
Um, in 1999, a share of Berkshire Class A cost 50000 So did my pool. Today, Berkshire is worth $220,000. <laughs> my pool, at best, is worth a negative 35000 But it's a, it's a happy story for my family and myself. Um, Berkshire is, is paid for all of my three children, their college educations, and I've taken all of, my, um, all of my, my wife and my family to the meetings, and this is my oldest son, Jesse, at the meeting back in the 90s. And um, that's Jesse after Uncle Warren paid for his college education. Um, I've photographed um, Buffett a few times, a few more times over the years for different magazines, and uh, this is one I did for Golf Magazine when it was a story about golf twosomes, and it was Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. But uh, I got them to pose with me, and I, I titled this Two Rich Guys with a Poor Photographer in the Middle. All right, so, you know, back to the, you know, a lucky accident changing your life. And going to the annual meetings, um, I made many wonderful friends. And the most important, I met uh, Hendrik Lever and his lovely wife, Claudia. And we became friends. We had mutual interest in photography, investing. And, and um, Hendrik, you know, said, these great minds of investing, these men in, uh, are, are getting older in age, and it would be important from history to document them photographically. And so that became the idea for the book. And my job was to try to create a, a distinctive, very poignant, and... Uh, elegant portrait of each person, and, and I embraced it with passion uh, because I thought it was so important, and I wanted every photograph of the 33 to be as powerful and to be as compelling as the next picture. The first portrait we made um, was of Charlie Munger in 2010, and this is the way that it, it looks on, in the book, and, and the, the reason I tell you is, is that uh, how important it is for a designer to come in and give the book a voice in terms of the text and marrying that to the picture. And so it makes the photograph and the story very, very interesting. So it, as Hendrick said, it takes a, a whole team to assemble this. And I was the photographic part. Hendrick was producing it and driving me along and saying, more pictures, more pictures, more pictures. I was slow. And that was the day that we finished the portrait with Charlie Munger, and we were all so very, very happy because this was the beginning. And uh, I was scared to death of photographing Charlie Munger because he could be so severe. And I thought he was going to say, Five pictures, 10 minutes, this is too much. But he was almost like a grandfather, very, um, very considerate and very much a gentleman. And I remember the comment that he made at the end. He looked at us and he says, a German money manager, an American photographer, and a Japanese camera, the world does not make sense. And, and here are some of my favorite portraits um, that we did for the book. Uh, probably one of the most interesting was photographing Irving Kahn in New York at the age of 106 or 107. Um, and the, the text is, is really beautiful, the stories that go along and complement the pictures. And Irving Kahn said, uh, and this is a quote, having a family, healthy children, 
seeing what they've achieved at the firm, these have all given me great pleasure. I've also gotten pleasure from meeting people who are smarter than me and who gave me important answers. There are too many mysteries in life. At some point, you have to ask for directions. This is Marty Whitman, uh, an investing legend from New York at age 90. Um, he looks back and wondering on his life, and he never expected to mount to much. He was born in 1924 in the Bronx, grew up in a rough section, the, the child of Jewish immigrants from Poland. And I think um, someone asked me, what were the characteristics of the investors that made them so uh, unique and iconoclastic? And I think uh, they had independence of the mind to go against the crowd, patience and discipline, and, and the most important, I think, was the emotional fortitude to hold their own and stick by their guns and to really stand and think independently. And we pulled a quote from each of the investors to run alongside their portrait, and Marty's was, one of my problems that as I got older and richer, I got lazier. You got to be diligent and careful, and in 2008, I wasn't. And lovely Isabel Levy, who we heard spoke, and um, you know, I had between 30 minutes and to an hour to work, and she was wonderful. She gave me an hour, and and, and you know, I just tried to capture an essence of their character that would make the, the person thumbing through the book stop and really take a look at them. Klaus Kaldemargen, who photographed in Frankfurt in 2014. And um, the last picture in, in the book and in the show is of Warren Buffett. And I love the quote, my dad believed in me, what I basically got from my father was unconditional love. Whatever I did, he was all for it. It didn't, how much it didn't matter how much money I made or anything like that. It was just do your best in whatever you take on. Now, this was done in, um, I think, two, 2013. And I had been waiting since the 90s when I got that damn letter back from him about the pool. And uh, so this gave me a perfect opportunity to take it back up with him again and, uh, and wonder if I could get a few more B shares for what the pool it cost me. But uh, <laughs> he wasn't game. Anyway, I was really passionate about the project and loved the opportunity to make the photographs and put them in a book for you all to enjoy. Uh, I hope you take it home with you and treasure it for years and years to come. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.